Okay, thank you for bearing with, bearing with us there. We are live in the studio. This is live at REC, WRK Atlanta 91.1. Live in the studio here with Atlanta Supergroup, Insomniac, and friends. Ha, ha, ha. Go ahead and say hi, guys. What's up? Hey. Hello. Hola. Hello. Hello. So if you guys uh, want to just each introduce yourself, uh, tell us what instrument you play and uh, what other uh, bands you play in. Uh, I'm Alex Avedisu and I play guitar. Um, Amos Rifkin, I play drums. I uh, play also in uh, Devil Things and uh, Lust and a couple of other local. Uh, I'm Jamie. Um, I play bass and I play in another band called Leech Garden. The Canopy, right? Never, never heard of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, not anymore. Really? <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> For the record, that's the music that's playing in the background. <laughs> Mike Morris, uh, guitar. Awesome. So, yeah, just a random note. Got a message from uh, one of our listeners. Wants to say Michael Myers says you guys crushed with a K <laughs> from Crust. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, first and foremost, uh, the name Insomniac. Where does that come from? Uh, I've had that one for a couple years. Um, I moved back from Nashville about five years ago coming up and uh, started working on some new music and uh, had a couple different iterations of the band Insomniac starting out as more of like a heavy metal band and uh, progressing back towards psychedelic music like I used to play in Nashville and stuck the name you know checked the name and no one had it and that was a surprise hmm. and I have an Insomniac of probably 15 years now um, something that's definitely close to me and definitely I think translates through the music Heck yeah, yeah, I feel that. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, um, I, I, I've you know been a follower of uh, most of you guys' other bands, and you, you guys all definitely come from very different backgrounds musically. You know, I guess all you know all kind of falling under that vast umbrella of metal and heavy rock music. Just sort of like I, I was curious when I first discovered the band, uh, sort of like how did y'all um, come together under one roof and decide to play together and and, and play the style of music that's very different from what I've heard from y'all's previous work. Um, yeah, I played at a psychedelic band back in Nashville for a long time, and coming back to Atlanta, uh, it was the, my favorite music scene I've ever music scene I've ever seen in the country. <laughs> so uh, coming back, uh, a lot of my friends in town play you know a ton of black metal, death metal, um, and you know, every time I visit from Nashville, I'd see all sorts of kinds, and I kind of wanted to branch out, play something like that, and uh, you know about it year and a half ago, me and Amos started hanging out a lot, and I told him I had a bunch of riffs I've written over the years, and they've gone, you know, through different kinds of styles, and I finally locked back in on the psychedelic stuff, and I know he had done a bunch of different kinds of music, but once I jammed with him for the first time, he just locked into it, and it just started growing from there, and you know, I went from jamming in his uh, living room to getting a hold of Jamie and Mike over here and bringing them in, and probably last, you know, six months of kind of forming the sound and searching for the right people for it and it's been awesome since yeah no i, I was gonna say um you know you say different sounding from what you heard before I, I definitely would say you know it's hard to you know to pin when i try and describe y'all's music someone it's very hard to pin down a, a genre or a style to give it it's got like a lot of different uh influences a lot of you know slow doom psychedelic mm -hmm. stuff but there's some drone and some kind of world music vibes in there as well <coughs> uh, it, you know a lot of a lot of the the songwriting definitely is trying to evoke more of a, like a, a physical feeling mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of cold riffs there's a lot of hot riffs there's a lot of you know wind and you know elemental kind of vibes that we're trying to cultivate with the music definitely definitely um, yeah and a lot of uh, I guess like kind of uh, more melodic clearer pretty tones to it as well definitely uh, very diverse so yeah you know, I was kind of curious to, to ask specifically what y'all's uh, musical influences are outside of the the metal realm um, for me you know, I've been on a big country kick lately <laughs> um, and I love a lot of world music like Ravi Shankar, Zakir Hussain uh, I got to see him pretty recently for the second time and yeah that's always been one of the most mind-blowing concerts I've ever seen but uh, big on the blues, coming from uh, coming from Nashville too. So, uh, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, in a kind of a, a punk and hardcore background. So playing really slow, dynamic music is a real 
change of pace for me <laughs> where I'm just used to hitting everything as hard and fast as I can. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, space in between the notes this <laughs> time to really take deep breaths and uh, kind of lock in with the groove. And it's been a really fun, challenging experience for me. Uh, but uh, a lot of a lot of what I've been contributing musically hasn't really been pulling from outside influences as, as much as it is trying to match Al and, hmm. and Mike and, and uh, their their guitars. You know, I'm trying to come up to their level uh, and less kind of set the pace as I would in other bands. Hmm. Yeah, so it's sort of like a a growing point for everybody, I guess. That's very cool. Um, like you were saying, uh, the music kind of uh, evokes um, sensations, I guess, you know, be it like kind of elementally, or um, I remember uh, over here in um, you, Amos, and, and, and Alex having a conversation about uh, the song titles and how they kind of um, describe these like sort of landscape experiences. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of curious to know like how, how you sort of gear that with, with your song writing or whatever. Um, you know, for me, a, a big, uh, you know, passion of mine other than music is uh, nature and outdoors and backpacking and camping. So, uh, you know, I draw a lot of my inspiration from a bunch of the trips I've taken all around country and world at this point. Um, kind of bring that in, get a vibe from where I'm at and translate that back into music. And that's where a lot of the elemental stuff kind of comes from. And, you know, Mike on board too, like the stuff I'm playing, as soon as I heard what he does, it just kind of flows with it but something I would have never thought of and so once the layers start building from there it kind of really hones in on the kind of visual picture. Definitely, definitely. We uh, we picked up uh, Jamie just through my experiences booking his other bands like Campy and Bleach Garden. Yeah. I knew you know what we were in, in for for bass but um, you know Mike kind of came came to mind when me and Al were trying to think of good complimentary second guitars and uh, back in the, the Thunderbox rehearsal space my band used to, to share a common wall with Mike's uh, room when he was playing in Brass Knuckle Surfer, which was an instrument, uh, instrumental psychedelic band that uh, his, his style of guitar, you know, as soon as I, I played some of the music for Al, he was like, hell yeah, this is, this is what we need uh, to, to really take this stuff uh, off, off the ground. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, along that note of um, sort of, you know, evoking um, sensation through your music. Um, would you say that um, your live shows and I guess ultimately um, your record will, will be sort of ha have a more of like a concept album approach Big to time. it? Big time. Absolutely. And what, 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 do you s what would you say in y'all's words kind of distinguishes a concept album and the experience a listener has from it as opposed to um, something less conceptual you know a lot of a lot of the the songs both in in title and in the the vibe that we were were kind of shooting for um, has to correspond with a specific part of like a physical trip you might take um, where you know you start with a, the meditation the first song we call the meditation where everything kind of sets in and you start to, to you know set out on this journey uh the second song has more of like a climbing feel and that's that's the mountain and there's a lot of uh kind of riffs and rhythms that that would have been like taken really hard steps up the, the steep mountain face um you know the next song we call the forest which is more of an interlude it kind of uh sets the tone of somebody uh walking through some sort of uh, enchanted forest where they're they're really starting to to see some crazy stuff going on. Uh, and then in the middle, as you might hear it, it starts to really get heavy and a little dark and a little harsh. And, you know, you might hear some, some kind of evil noise in, in the forest and start running towards, you know, the, the light part where you <laughs> escape the evil that's chasing you. So a lot of, a lot of the parts that were, uh, where the music's coming up and down and these really uh, dynamic parts, it's course corresponding to a concept that we have uh, that's gonna come out like across the whole uh, record and the whole set is like one kind of continuous, uh, you know, atmospheric thing that we're trying to, to set. Nice. So definitely going for a, like a cohesive album that's best. I mean, well, pretty much as every album, but best, you know, particularly listened to as a whole piece. Yeah, for sure. That's very cool. Um, unfortunately, we weren't re really able to accommodate that um, in here. But to what degree do you think? Um, 
because like, like you say, you know, you, there's definitely a very visual aspect that's obviously primarily you know invoked by the music. But um, do you guys uh, plan on particularly for your live shows having like a sort of like visual backdrops or to create more of like a video audual auditory experience for your listeners? Absolutely. Um, you know, my other hobby is nature photography and uh, kind of seeing the world uh, through a different view. So every time I go out on a bunch of hikes or backpacking trips, um, I want to start incorporating a lot of the imagery I get out there, kind of tying it back into the sounds that are cultivated from them. So uh, I'm really excited for the shows coming up this year and um, all the stuff that uh, we got in store. Heck yeah, speaking of which show, what, what did you do? Oh. <laughs> Not bad. Um, what do you all have in, in store as far as um, shows or releases in the, the near future? Um, over the past few months, we've been working on, on a demo uh, slash EP um, with our buddy Josh Lamar, who, who mixed uh, and engineered our uh, The Death of Kings uh, LP that came out last year. Um, so we've got a good relationship with him, and he's been working hard trying to uh, get, I think, trying to do three, three songs for release, probably in by the spring. Um, there's a show coming up on uh, February 27th. Uh, UK Doom band uh, Conan is coming back to town, mm -hmm. and we'll be we'll be supporting them along with our friends in Dead Now, uh, who are made up of uh, Andrew, who used to be in Torch, Andrew Elsner, right. and uh, the two dynamic duo of Day Old Men, Bobby and Derek. Yeah, uh, they're they're some really good homies, and we're excited to play with them again. So that's gonna be a good show, definitely. I meant to ask this earlier, but um, I, I'm curious to know. Um, this is something I ask every band. Uh, what, what 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 your writing process is like? Um, do, you know, do you have like a central songwriter? Is it more collaborative? And then um, does most of the writing, you know, happen in the practice space? Kind of come up with in the moment, or is it like a lot of it like kind of conceptualized outside and then brought into the practice space? You know, uh, as we started, I guess uh, me and Amos started writing everything originally uh, until we filled out the members in the band so uh, for you know the early songs of it started out with a stockpile of riffs I had and you know feels and um, putting those together and cultivating something you know as one uh, for the newer stuff now um, you know we've kind of come to see what kind of uh, feels we're looking for what kind of uh, dynamics we're looking for and get the visual picture and fill it in from there so you know uh, the set we played tonight kind of will expand into the whole record from there um, as one journey still. Uh, so as far as songwriting, you know, we start with a couple of riffs to start and layer everything on there and go back in, hone dynamics. And a lot of times once we get to the practice space with a couple central riffs or melody ideas, we might start throwing it on the whiteboard and, and kind of whipping up a bare bone structure of a song and then something we can all at least start to read off of and play through. And as we play it through, we'll, we'll figure out what's, what parts need to be you know, stretched out what parts need to be played a little fewer, uh, where we might need to incorporate a new riff or part in the song if we need to take a direction or even like change like a whole, begin a whole different movement with, with different songs. Uh, we have a lot of kind of long, long compositions, seven, eight minutes. Sometimes these new ones are stretching over 10. And when you get to songs that length, you, you have like whole, miniature compositions that just kind of link together towards other ones but hmm. we we're calling them one one song even though they might have three or four different little miniature parts inside of them so definitely i the songs are definitely evolving in, in the practice space you know mm -hmm. yeah very cool um on a, on a really random note i, I remember um, listening to y'all talk about um the band and I, I, I thought it was really cool, like, the, the song titles of, of, of each song. Um, so just out of curiosity, what were the song titles of which I'll play tonight? Um, the first one was, was Meditation, uh, which, which is probably about seven, seven and a half minutes, and mm -hmm. has three different movements that kind of get you, pull you deeper into this experience. You know, and it's, it's, it's kind of like an overture that kind of touches on each of the themes that you might find throughout the rest of the set, but um, not, you know, in the true definition of an overture where we're actually introducing each musical theme that mm -hmm. you might find but you know we were more just kind of hinting at, at the uh, the atmosphere that might come later in the set um, the next one's the mountain as we talked about before in which you're you're actually starting to physically climb um, 
And then you move into the forest, the third song, which which is the short one, uh, the three three and a half minute short one, <laughs> as we call it. Uh, and then uh, once you pull out of the forest, you you come to the sea. The fourth song is the sea, where you're, uh, you know, at the beginning you're really walking along the the edge of some, you know, haunted shore and find a boat, and you know you you hear uh, the boat launch in the middle of the song and you have a little walk in the plank uh, <laughs> drum roll in there. Uh, like I said, it's really like literal at sometimes how how far we're taking this concept. And uh, towards the end of the sea, you know, a storm part starts kicking up and find yourself shipwrecked and eventually, uh, you know, wash up on a beach uh, where there's where we've got a couple uh, songs that fit in right there that take you to the last one that we're not playing yet, but we're excited to debut this soon. And the last one is the uh, the, the awakening, which we uh, get a lot of positive feedback for live. Uh, it's got the Real repetitive riff at the end, um, and you know that's at the end of your journey when you're finally getting to your destination and able to sit and continue your meditation and eventually have your revelation and receive your whatever wisdom you're seeking, uh, and that that's the the sound of that building uh, repetitive part at the end. You're really like hammering that that point home. So, uh, but as we continue to write the album, there's some other other parts of the trip that we're, we're kind of whipping up that we're excited to, to have put out eventually. Very cool. That, that sounds dense. <laughs> it's pretty intense. So, um, it almost sounds like y'all could, y'all could have like a, like a novel or like a short story that kind of like... I, I kind of am not uh, opposed to the idea of having kind of like a short film to go along yeah. with it that we could even play a projection of during our set something like that we're still tinkering with the the visual aspect of, of the band where we're going to go to to bring it to to into people's eyes to the same level we're bringing it to their ears yeah because then you know like hearing the music you know was was incredible but then like hearing your explanation so it's like i want to like go back and listen to it again like thinking about that you know <laughs> it's very cool anyways um it's, it's now 11 o'clock which means i've got to uh hand the torch over to our host of, I believe, Girl Rock, coming on next. Just want to thank, uh, this was Insomniac. They played live at Rec here on WRK Atlanta. This show will be uh, archived on the website, WRK.org, for the next two weeks or so, so you can go back and listen to it as many times as you want, or if you tuned in later, if you want to show your friends, that's WRK.org. And we will also be posting a um, video with the multiple camera shots of every guitar, the drums, everything of this set on the YouTube page. Just go on YouTube and search WRK. WRK, 91.1, next week, 10 p.m. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Hell yeah. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>